Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, we're going to be adapting vintage lenses to the Fuji GFX 100S. Today's episode is brought to you by Luminar Neo. You can check out the link in the description below or simply use the code KEVIN10 at checkout to get 10% off your copy of Luminar Neo today. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. And if you like this channel and you find the topics that I talk about to be super fascinating and you want to have a more in-depth listen to my opinions and my thoughts on certain things, I highly recommend you go check out the F11 Photography Podcast, which is on all major platforms, including Apple and Spotify. But now let's get on with today's episode. Have you ever seen the movie Spaceballs, the scene where Spaceball 1 is going by and it takes like 10 minutes just to see the spoof of the Star Destroyer moving by? Well, yes, this looks stupid ridiculous. I have a Mamiya RB uh, lens, the 180 f4.5 lens, which is meant for a 6x7 medium format film camera adapted to a Photo Deox uh, RB. 67 to Canon EOS adapter, and then an EOS adapter to the GFX. So there's three different steps to get uh, light coming into my sensor. Why would I do such a silly thing? Well, the answer is always obvious. It's because I can. I actually like to take things that weren't meant to go together and see what I can produce with them. So you take this beautiful RB uh, 67 lens, which by the way, if you're getting into medium format film, I highly recommend you check out the RB67 platform because it's one of the cheapest ways to get into medium format. The lenses are fantastic. And since this sensor is smaller than six by seven, we're only utilizing the center of this really massive lens, which is typically the best part of the lens. So that was fascinating to me. And so we're gonna explore what we can get with this 180 millimeter lens. Uh, we're also going to explore my 50 millimeter, my 127 millimeter, and my 90 millimeter Mamiya Secor C lenses, but we're not just gonna stop there because we're also in today's episode going to attempt to use these 35 millimeter lenses. You can see my mouth. Uh, <laughs> clearly this is wide open at 1.7, but we're gonna attempt to try out these 35 millimeter Minolta MC and MD lenses, which are pretty rad as well. See what kind of results we can get with them. I'm also gonna adapt a Canon EF lens because as I mentioned, my uh, Fuji GFX to EOS adapter exists as well. It's part of my uh, massive rigging of these RB67 uh, lenses. And so I'm gonna try out Canon uh, EF lenses on the GFX 100S as well. And it's just to see what kind of cool results we can get, see what kind of strange renderings the glass gives us, and then how it resolves on this gorgeous sensor. But I'm not gonna delve too much into the whys in terms of words and talking to you about it. Let's go do some sessions in today's episode, and let's see why I think these lenses look pretty darn cool on the GFX 100S. So I did a little session out in the backyard with my new little puppy, Queso. Uh, he has that puppy energy, so trying to shoot at a shallow depth of field with this Record 28 millimeter 2.8 proved to be a bit difficult. That being said, I did get a few shots that turned out to be quite sharp. Uh, you can see some pretty nice bouquet in the background. There was some decent vignetting on there, but you'd expect that out of a 28 millimeter lens on a medium format body. And then I also used the 135 2.8, which as you can see right here, it does a pretty darn good job of compressing. Very beautiful bokeh, hexagonal football shaped around the outer edges. The 135 also made an appearance at one of my photo sessions of the model. I think it has a pretty good vibe here. And I think overall it's a fantastic lens. <laughs> We 
get to those gargantuan medium format 6x7 lenses adapted to my GFX a bit later, but we're going to stay on the 35mm train and we're going to take a look at my MD and MC Minolta lenses in a studio environment on my GFX 100S. I started off using the 135 f2.8 and I thought it did a fantastic job. Just take a look at these shots right here. I was hovering around f8 and f11 uh, throughout this entire session and I think these f8, f11 shots that you see right here from the 135 f2.8 look really great. I thought it had pretty good contrast. Combined with the Provia standard on the GFX 100S, it really had beautiful film vibes. Things were a tad softer and that's just a characteristic of this lens. Next, we moved on to the 85 f1.7, which I also shot around f8, f11, and man, stop down to f8. Just an absolutely gorgeous lens. Uh, unlike the 135 that has a built-in lens hood, I ended up uh, not remembering to bring my lens hood for the 85. And as you all know, when you shoot without a lens hood and you shoot into the sun or a backlight like you see here, it interferes, even though I thought it looked kind of cool. Maybe if I had leaned into this a little bit more, I could have done some more experimental things, but hey, that's another shoot for another day. So you saw how these Minolta lenses behaved in a controlled environment like a studio, but let's go take them somewhere less predictable. Let's go take them on an environmental portrait shoot. So here's some shots that I took with the 28 millimeter. Yeah, it had vignetting like I showed you earlier, but as you can see, I fixed it and it looks just fine in post-production. Uh, I liked shooting this in monochrome. I thought Lydia did an incredible job. Let's move on to the 50 millimeter. A 50 millimeter, as you can also see, displays heavy vignetting, also correctable in post. Of course, you can also crop because all of you who are GFX owners have at least a 50 megapixel, if not a 100 megapixel camera. I thought the 50 1.4 did a fantastic job. Check out some of these shots I took with it right here. Now let's move on to some shots that I took with the 85 millimeter 1.7. It is a killer lens. You can get them for not that expensive when you compare them to GFX lenses, that's for sure. But I love the way that all the colors render on it. The bouquet is pretty pleasing. Uh, you, obviously at 1.7, you can't get too close to things or you're gonna throw it out of focus. And there's far less vignetting on the 85 millimeter than the 50, which you can see right here. But in general, I love the depth of field. Uh, I love the sense of three-dimensional space it gives you. But yeah, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration and stuff if you look at the lights and everything, especially that bouquet you see right there. But that's the charm of these lenses. You're not buying them to be surgical. If you wanna be surgical, go get yourself a GFX lens. These lenses are to take two things that were never meant to go together and see what kind of unique results you can get. That shot right there, that was done in Luminar Neo. It pops, it looks pretty modern. And so, you know, these lenses are powerful, these Minolta lenses. But let's move on to the 135 and let's talk about the results we got with that. So shooting at 2.8, you obviously have a very narrow depth of field. This first file that you're looking at right here, this is just straight out of camera. There's no edits applied. This is just how the camera sees. Now I'm gonna do a Luminar Neo edit where I make it look modern. And this is what it would look like there. Then I'm gonna switch it up and use a program called Dehancer, which simulates film. 
I just wanted to show you that the files are strong on their own, but you can also take them into either of these directions and get pretty good results. All right, so let's look at the EF 135 F2, uh, the Canon lens made in 1996. Let's see how well it renders on the GFX 100S. Uh, there's this guy here smoking. Let's see what he's smoking. Let's get in a little closer to 100%. It looks like a black and mild. It is a black and mild at 300%. We can see it's a black and mild that renders pretty well. Uh, you know, you can see kind of some wonkiness here, uh, aberration, stuff like that. No biggie. And now here is my co-host of the F11 Photography Podcast, uh, Brandon Gorey. He is uh, getting his coffee and his kolache from this really cool place called Batch. And uh, just zooming in on that, it looks pretty darn sharp to me. And that's at 100%. I can read everything. Things super nice and sharp. And just, I, I like classic negative, but here, let's go over to Provia Standard. So you can, you know, see what the standard look looks like. Just like that. And I think that looks pretty darn good. Uh, Wayne Gretzky and Michael Scott quoted, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, I missed this shot that I did take. Uh, that's one of the consequences of using manual focus. Sometimes you just miss. And I missed my subject here, but I still thought it was a really beautiful and dreamy shot. So I did want to include it. The Canon EF 135F2 I think looks fantastic. I used a uh, Dehancer film simulation on there. So that's why it's got that kind of cool look. And then I did a shot of Lydia. This is also with the EF-135. We can go ahead and pull out that vignetting just a little bit. Not the end of the world. It still covers the sensor pretty well. But yeah, as you can see right here, the EF-135 F2 does a pretty good job. You could totally use it and add it to your collection. Is it as good as the GF lenses? No, but it's still pretty darn cool. And one final note on Canon lenses, when you turn your camera off, it always opens up the aperture to its widest setting. The workaround is that you need to put your camera in bulb mode, set your aperture, then turn your camera off. Now the moment you all have been waiting for, let's see what we can get out of those gigantic six by seven lenses. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of you watching today's episode are looking at my edits and to you, they're all over the map. This is intentional. And the reason why is I wanted to show you what the film simulations right off the GFX look like. I wanted to show you what would happen if you took it into a program like Luminar Neo. And then I wanted to show you maybe how close you could get it to film using a program like Dehancer. So that is why my edits are all over the map. But as you've seen throughout the entirety of this episode, I have been labeling as much detailed information as I can so you can kind of see where I took each of these edits. Great, now that you've seen me use these vintage lenses on the GFX, I'm sure you have questions about how I adapted them. So first go to settings, then go to button dial setting, then go to shoot without lens. Make sure that's selected to on, otherwise your shutter won't fire. Let's start with the Minolta MD. This right here is a KNF Concept MD to GFX adapter. You can get it for about $38. Machined very well. Nice, solid metal construction. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get it. One thing to note about this adapter is that if you are uh, shopping for Minolta lenses, it's called an MD to GFX adapter, but the MC lenses work just fine on this. So MD, MC uh, works fine with this KNF Concept adapter. Now let's move on to both the Canon and the Mamiya RB uh, adapter. And yes, I said both because the adapter I used in today's episode is a modular adapter. So what you do is you take the adapter off of the GFX to Canon, 
And then you adapt it to this GFX RB adapter. And now you have two pieces. It's a modular adapter. Pretty cool. And so now I've got the GFX. I have the Canon uh, to GFX adapter. And then I have my RB67 to EOS adapter. Then I take my RB lens and connect that in there. It's a bayonet adapter. Now I have my gigantic Franken Shalong setup. Uh, and this is how you'll do that. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering because the RB67 uses a bellows system for focusing. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, well, how do you focus on these lenses? Well, you see how it's getting longer and shorter? Well, it moves the lens forward and backward, just like the bellows system on the RB67. Uh, if you are watching this and you're like, hey, I don't want to adapt an RB uh, 67 to a Canon adapter and then to a GFX adapter. No worries. They actually make just a straight RB 67 to GFX adapter. I'll leave a link in the description below for that guy. I'll also leave a link in the description below for this modular adapter. The straight adapter is like $275. This was 289. So for $14 more, I was like, well, Hey, why don't I just go ahead and get a, a Canon adapter as well. So that way, if I want to adapt these gargantuan lenses to my R5, I can do that. I'm sure another question a lot of you are asking is, well, what about the aperture? Because on the RB67, you have this clickable aperture ring. This is a variable uh, aperture ring right here. You can't tell what aperture you're on. You just see things get darker. You see things get brighter. And then it will uh, accurately, when you're using like your exposure simulator, it will accurately kind of show you what the exposure is going to look like. Uh, so you just kind of have to figure out depth of field. That's kind of one uh, quirky thing about this. There's a lot of quirky things about this. We'll get into those. Uh, one last note I want to make is it's an RB67 and an RZ67 adapter. So if you are on the RZ system, you probably already knew this, but the lenses are compatible with this as well. Now let's talk about what I think about adapting vintage lenses to the GFX 100S. Uh, if you're trying to get into uh, vintage lenses because you're hoping to get something that's better than your, uh, your GF lenses, and when I say better, I mean like, surgical uh, look, very precise, squeezing every last bit of quality out of your sensor. Uh, the vintage lenses are not going to do that. And that should be of no surprise because they weren't designed to work with the GFX. So you're taking two things that were never meant to work with one another. And yeah, you're going to get some interesting results like right here. Check out the shots I took on the 50 millimeter uh, Mamiya Secor lens. Uh, you can see the bouquet right there. It looks like the leaf shutter kind of makes a star. You can see that star in the bouquet. Pretty quirky, pretty interesting, but also pretty cool. If you're looking to get these adapters because you're trying to get a unique look, something a little different, something that makes your images stand out, I definitely recommend it for that. Even if it's the 35 millimeter, you don't have to get uh, the gargantuan six by seven, but these RB67 lenses, you can get a lot of them for a hundred bucks. They're about the same price as 35 millimeter lenses at the moment. So, you know, maybe take advantage of their cheap prices because they're probably not going to last forever the way film is going through the roof. Um, I also think that uh, when you combine it with some film simulation software, obviously you have the uh, built-in simulations in your Fuji camera, or you can use a program like Dehancer. You can get some pretty close shots to film. I will say that uh, as somebody who shoots on film, using these old lenses on the GFX uh, is the closest I've ever gotten to shooting on film without actually shooting on film. Now, at the end of the day, I always tell people like, hey, if you want that film look and you want to nail that film look, go buy some film. But a lot of people out there, uh, they, they want to like tweak in post-production. They want to tweak with things digitally. I totally understand that. And, and so if you're trying to get closer to that film look, I do recommend using vintage lenses with the GFX 100S or 50 or whatever GFX you use. And I think you'll be a, a lot happier uh, than just using these more modern and surgical looking lenses.
So anyway, that does it for today's episode. I hope you learned something. I hope you found uh, this to be educational. Uh, Keep in mind that uh, the Photo Deox adapters I showed you and all the other companies that make adapters, they do make them for other platforms. So if you're a Pentax user, maybe you shoot on a Pentax 645 or a 67, maybe you shoot on an old Hasselblad or something like that, you can actually adapt those lenses uh, to the GFX as well. Uh, This is more of just maybe to open up some of your eyes who have never really gotten into this, or maybe you've been curious about it, but you haven't really seen a lot of videos on it. Uh, Hopefully you found this video to be useful. I thank each and every one of you for watching today. If you find the content on this channel to be helpful, to be useful, I humbly ask you, click the subscribe button below. And until we meet again, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.